Ah, welcome to the final 14 card review of Black Rock Mountain, a Hearthstone adventure. 14 cards out of the 31 total, so a lot of new stuff. And I gotta say, some of these cards are quite a lot obviously better than the ones revealed. And then there's like a loser here and there, but not that many losers. I think there's only one, in fact. We start off with Cro-Magus. I remember fighting this guy in World of Warcraft. I'm very surprised to learn he's a dragon. I read the wiki, and apparently there's some lore where Nefarian was performing some sick experiments with Corehound slash beast type things, but there you have it. 8 mana 6 8, and it's a dragon. Congratulations. It uh, dodges the fun of, uh, I've got the fun in my sights, also known as Big Game Hunter. Obviously a really slow card. It's the type of card which is directly comparable to Kel'Thuzad. Kel'Thuzad is better if you already have a board. Chromagus is better if you don't already have a board. Uh, there's actually a lot of people who just compare it to Kel'Thuzad and say like, oh well, this is obviously worse than Kel'Thuzad. But the thing is Kel'Thuzad is often bad because when you have no board presence, then you play it and it's just a big guy. But with Chromagus, that's a guy they need to deal with no matter what. This card is obviously too slow if the metagame is fast, but in a slow meta, I would be very happy to play this card. It is worth mentioning that if you draw cards on the turn where you play Chromagus, for example, if you have the Acolyte of Pain out and you have a Death Spite, and you play the Chromagus and then you use the Death Spite and you draw a card with the Acolyte of Pain, you do get to draw the extra card, and that's pretty nice and fun. Uh, another possibly not crazy thing is it's turn 10, you played the Wild Growth, you have excess mana in your hand, and then like you pass the turn, and then on a later turn, without playing excess mana yet, on a later turn you play the Chromagus, and then you play excess mana, and then you get to draw a card and put another copy in your hand. The greed value player in me loves this card. Um, it's a neutral which draws cards, and even better than draws cards, duplicates your cards which are already presumably good. I love it. Even though it's clearly terrible if the format is fast. But if the format is slow, it's incredible. In Arena, this card is going to be pretty good because it's big and it's not as bad as Kel'Thuzad when you're behind, like, it's actually basically got taunt unless they're so far ahead and are about to kill you. Chromagus is really cool. Harry Chromagus. Demon Wrath. Looks like it's meant for demon locks, but, and it might look like, oh, Blizzard just keeps putting out cards which are trying to pigeon us whole, pigeonhole us into this uh, particular, like, style of play. And yes, obviously it's really good in a demon deck. Consecration for one less, that's amazing. But perhaps it's good even in non-demon decks, or with that index which have minimal amounts of demons in them. I mean, it costs one less mana than Hellfire, and dealing two damage to everything for three mana isn't even a bad deal. Especially when you're playing a control deck, like, there are two main types of demon decks right now in the meta. There's the demon control handlock deck, and then there's the zoo demon deck. I think Demon Wrath is going to see some play, if not two cards in both of those. So this is a quite a good card as well. In Arena, this card is going to be much like Hellfire, and that was a good card in Arena. I expect Demon Wrath will also be a good card. I mean, Zoo found it sometimes iffy to include the Hellfire. You might see Zoo move a bit more demony. Uh, this does trigger your own eggs, which is pretty nice. If there's a lot of three twos out there, then Demon Wrath goes up in value. If if it turns out that there's more Mech Mage type cards, which are a lot of two threes, then you're still going to want to use your Hellfire. But a cool card, nice AOE, synergy for demons. Me likey. Dragon Consort! This card is insane! Obvious include two of if you're playing the Paladin Dragon deck, and this card like makes the Paladin Dragon deck. Paladins were always a possibility to be the deck with dragons in them, but Dragon Consort, 5 mana 5-5, five, five, and you draw an Innervate, 
and you play it immediately and you like discount it later, that's really good. This is the most obvious card of all time to put into your Paladin Dragon deck. I don't think I need to say anything other than that. Other than, what does a Paladin Dragon deck look like? Well, you're gonna have your Hungry Dragon, you're gonna have your Blackwing Technician, you're gonna have your Blackwing Elementalist. Like, I kind of almost think it builds itself to some extent. It's gonna be a control deck. You uh, put the Dragon Synergy cards in, you put this card in, you probably put in Ysera. Uh You possibly put in Nefarian. Um, Nefarian I reviewed earlier and I was like, well, compared to Ysera, it's not that good, but maybe you want both. And like Dragon Consort makes it even more likely that you want both. You put in that, uh, the 6 mana, 6-4 six, dragon, you muster, and then it's just paladin goodness everywhere. Sick card, obvious, extreme value, 5 mana, 5-5 five, five, dragon, might have been good enough just because of the dragon. You get a free card draw Innervate on top of that, and Innervate is a good card. A and of course this, um, applies forever, so you play this on turn 5, and then feel free to on turn 7 then play your Nefarian. Or on turn 7 you can play your Azure Drake Consecration. That's insane. That's really good. Sick card. In Arena, 5 mana, 5-5 five, five is still good. And sometimes the battle card will apply. Druid of Flame. Some people have already started to tear apart Druid cards saying, ah, oh, Druids are getting nothing. But I see possibility in this innocent looking card. Uh, very flexible. 3 mana, you either get a 2-5 or a 5-2. A 2-5 for 3 looks pretty good. And if you're already on the offensive and you think the opponent's deck doesn't have stuff that deals 2 damage, which happens some of the time, then you can transform it to that. But past that is the additional coolness that the 5-2 and the 2-5 are actually a fire cat and a fire hawk. But past that flavor coolness is that those are beasts, which means that we can revisit an old card in Goblins vs. Gnomes, Druid of the Fang! There might actually be enough beasts out there now for you to Druid of the Fang on turn 5, get that 7-7, seven, seven, insane. Or turn 2, Wild Growth, turn 3, 2-5, turn 4, 7-7? Seven, seven. Wow. Anyways, it's a possibility, and... I think Druid of the Thing could definitely be a thing. Druid of the Flame, it's obviously a solid card. 2-5 for 3 hasn't been done yet, and that might be the level of stats which makes something insane. Uh, in Arena, this will be really good and constructed. I do agree that Shade of Nax Ramus will still probably be the 3-drop, and you'll use the Druid of the Flame if the Druid of the Fang is a deck. So that means when you see the Druid of the Flame, expect to see Druid of the Fang following fairly soon behind. Emperor Tharasan. This card might be the most insane card in the set. Your must-have, if you will. I don't think I saw a single must-have card before, but this card... Wow. I'm going to admit that at first I thought it said Battle Cry at the end of your turn, reduce the cost of cards in your hand by one. Because even that would make this card really good, but it's even better than that. I'm saying this, of course, as someone who likes playing Control. In your aggro deck, you're not going to want to play this. Uh, in your face deck, absolutely not. But in a deck which has, like, when you're on turn 6 and you have 6 cards in hand, say, and then you play Emperor Tharasen and you have 5 cards left, that's a normal situation. So basically, you get a 5 mana refund, eventually. So it's as if Emperor Tharasen is a 1 mana 5-5. Five, five. And not just that, like, I'm saying you have the normal situation where on turn 6 you have 6 cards in your hand, but what if you have 10 cards in your hand and you play Emperor Thorisin? Uh Say you're playing a handlock deck or some kind of heavy control deck, then you play your Emperor Thorisin, and then you get a discount of 9 mana so that's a negative 3 mana 5-5. Five, five. I think this card is kind of going to take the place where Lothab is in many decks because Lothab was kind of like, ah, is this good enough to include? Sometimes it's good enough. But Emperor Tharistan, man, you put this in you put this in those control decks. You put this in those 
maybe mid-range decks? That one remains to be seen, but the control decks definitely. Uh, there's some sickness that you can do if you're turn 2 druid. You do your turn 2 wild growth, you do your turn 3 innervate Emperor Tharasan, and then if they don't deal with it immediately, you get not only a discount of 1 immediately, but then you get another discount, and then you get discounts everywhere. And, and of course, this can also just be sick in other decks, like you have your freeze mage deck, you put your Emperor Tharasan in there. Uh, at some point when you have a lot of cards in hand, you play Emperor Tharasan, you have your 7, 8, 9 card hand, you get your Fireballs discounted by one, your Frost Bolts discounted by one, your Ice Lances discounted by one, and then at a later turn you play your 3 mana Fireballs, your 1 mana Frost Bolts, your 0 mana Ice Lances, and you deal 26 damage. You put this in your new school Miracle Rogue deck, you play the Emperor Thorasan, you play the Conceal, you play the Preparation Sprint, and then you have a big hand, and they're all reduced by one, and then Emperor Thorasan lives, and then they're discounted by one again, and Emperor Thorasan is giving you something like 18 mana, 17 mana, 16 mana, and then you kill the opponent. This card is insane. Um, in Arena it's going to be less good, but still probably good, since it's kind of a mid-range control thing. Fire Guard Destroyer. Very good basic stat goodness card. The way that averages work, this is a 4 mana 5.5 attack slash 6 with Overload 1. And there's not much to say other than that's pretty good. Of course the Overload means it's a 5 mana card, so on average you're getting like a 5 mana 5.5 slash 6, but in actuality it's better because you can play it on turn 4. It's kind of nice because you play the Fire Guard Destroy on 4, and then you usually want to play Fire Elemental on 6. So your turn 5 play, you can play another 4 drop, which pr probably doesn't have Overload, and you're all set, and it's all good. Really good basic card. Yes, sometimes you get your 4-mana uh, 7-6, and then they BGH it, but you would probably be running this card in a deck with Dr. Boom and Neptulon anyways. You'd be running it in that style of deck. Um, you combine this with the Lava spell. You have a few more Overload cards. Maybe Unbound Elemental makes a comeback. Because a Fire Guard Destroyer, you play a 3-mana 2-4. Gets buffed to a 3-5 when you play your Fire Guard Destroyer. That's curve. So yeah, this card's really good. Very basic, but good. And it'll see play in the value mid-range slash control decks. Uh, in Arena, this card is top tier. Because stats are king in Arena. This card's better than Yeti. It's probably better than Hungry Dragon in Arena. Gang Up! I think this is the most overrated card, which many people are getting hyped on. But I, I see this card as being really cool, and then it'll never see any play, like, a week in to the expansion. Uh, hard to evaluate card. I'm going to say this belongs only in the most extreme of combo wombo decks. Uh, worth mentioning that you can choose the opponent's minion and then shuffle three copies into your deck. So the reason why this is... I'll list the reasons why this is bad first. It's two mana and then it does nothing. Uh, because you have to actually draw the cards. You lose a card because you have to pay it. So it's like two mana, lose a card, do nothing. But... If the game goes on long enough, then eventually your plan will come together. So first of all, Gang Up is really bad against aggro, like face decks, because you're not going to have enough time for Gang Up to even matter. In control decks, you might want to Gang Up a big legendary card, and then you end up playing three Ragnaroses or three Nefarians, and then that's really fun. Uh, of course, that takes a lot of time to do. Uh, the most obvious deck to generally include Gang Up on, which people have been talking about, is you put it into the fatigue rogue deck because you add three cards into your deck so you gang up your cold light oracle you play the cold light oracle you gang up it and then you have three more cold light oracles in your deck and then you play a bunch of cold light oracles and then you fatigue for a total of six less than the opponent which turns out to be a one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six damage and then usually the opponent will have some card draw but even if it's just six extra then uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 turns out to be... 21. But again, I don't really see this thing working out nearly as often as that scenario. There will always be the... In ladder there will always be enough 
aggressive decks, and not even aggressive decks, like even mid-range decks will probably get you before you get to do your gang up madness. Like having more copies of cards in your deck, it does improve the quality of your deck sometimes if it were, say, a control versus control matchup, but it only really matters if you go into fatigue. And then you have like three extra big guys. So, seems unlikely. In Arena, this card is going to be really bad because much the same reason as why Felreaver is really good. There is generally not enough time to go through your deck and find all these cards. Yada yada. Bottom tier card in Arena. Major Domo Executus. Well, this card is obviously really cool. 9 mana, 9 7, blah. But Death Rattle, that's where it's at. You replace your hero with Ragnaros the Fire Lord. So. What is replacing your hero with Ragnaros the Fire Lord? You become a hero with 8 health, and then your uh, hero ability is 2 mana, deal 8 damage to a random enemy. Die, insert. So, the nightmare is the opponent has 8 attack worth of stuff, you play your major domo, your opponent plays, I've got the fun in my sights, pew! And then he hits you for 8, and then you lose. And that's the story of Major Doma. I mean, having a hero with a maximum of 8 health, you don't need me to tell you that that's just asking for trouble. I at one point even considered not running Jaraxxus just because playing 15 health wasn't, like, good enough against Force of Nature Savage War which deals 14. One interesting note is that if you play Alexstrasza on your Major Doma, on your Ragnaros, you do go up to 15 max health. Wait, no, actually... I don't entirely know the interaction, but I do know you get set to 15 health. And then if you get to, like, 10 health, I don't think you can heal, but, I mean, this is not really important. Um, perhaps more importantly is if you have Ice Block up, and then you play Major Domo, and then you only have 8 health, it doesn't quite matter as much because you don't die anyways because of Ice Block. Needless to say, the hero ability of 2 mana deal 8 damage to a random enemy is pretty good, but it sure seems... Like, it's far too difficult to set up Major Domo uh, to actually be useful. Because one, it's a 9 mana 9 7. Two, your opponent gets to choose when you become Ragnaros the Fire Lord. Three, when your opponent chooses when you become Ragnaros the Fire Lord, you have 8 health. It doesn't seem to work out to me. That's not to say it's a really cool card, and I encourage everyone who's adventurous enough to try it out. But I will probably not be trying it out because I think it'll suck. Wow, what is this in Arena? It's really weird in Arena. In Arena, if you're ahead and then you play Major Domo Executus, you could suddenly find yourself losing to, like, Fireball and then Fire Blast and then, like, one more damage. You basically want to play Major Domo when you're at really low health, but then you just die to normal attacks anyways. Major Domo sucks in Arena, I've actually just decided. Quick shot! Just like the other Hunter card, uh, this card gives you a benefit when your hand is empty. Hooray. Hooray being a hunter and then playing all your cards and then getting a benefit. Uh, so, unlike that 4 mana 4-4 four, four beast, which becomes a 7-7, seven, seven, this is a 2 mana deal 3 damage card, which is a strictly better dark bomb. That's okay for other classes to get better dark bombs because warlocks need to have slightly worse cards because their hero ability is draw a card. Quick shot is incredible. 2 mana deal 3 damage, and if you're top decking, you're gonna draw into something else which probably deals damage. Awesome. Now the only tough part is thinking whether or not you're gonna run one of this card in your hunter deck, or if you're gonna run two of this card in your hunter deck. And in your face deck, you're probably gonna remove your Leroy, because then instead of top decking Leroy, or holding it, you play your quick shot, you top deck a card, and then you uh, skill command the face or something. You probably run two of this in the face hunter deck. Just think, like, a year ago, those face hunter decks had to use Arcane Shot, 1 mana, deal 2 damage. Yeah, really good card, the only question is do you run 1 or 2? And by the way, I said the same thing with the um, other hunter card, but now that Quick Shot has been released, I will go back on my claim that you might run 1 or 2 cards of those, now you're actually going to run 1 or 2 cards of this instead. And the other one is useless. Maybe. I mean, maybe you still run one of the other one. But I mean, if you were going to run one of those, then you should just run two quick shots. So maybe you're going to run two quick shot in one of those. And then like a deck which runs out of cards really fast. Maybe you put Jeeves into that deck, but 
the face on our deck already ran out of cards really fast and still didn't include Jeeves. So now we know this card is going to be amazing because 2 mana deal 3 damage is really good when you're trying to board control. And if you can actually empty your hand and then play this quick shot, super value. 2 mana deal 3 damage, draw a card, that's insane. That's really good. It's not even a nightmare to have 2 quick shots in your hand. You just play a quick shot and then you deal 3 damage and then you play another quick shot and you deal 3 damage and then you draw a card. It's like, woo. I played 2 mana to deal 3 damage. That's pretty good. Resurrect! Wow, what is this? So, 2 mana, summon a random friendly minion that died this game. Priest card. Is this card amazing? Is this card complete garbage? We are gonna find out. I don't know yet. Uh, what I do know though, is that if your injured blade master dies, and then you resurrect it, it's gonna be a 4-7 because the battle cry doesn't come into effect. We have seen injured blade master get phased out a little bit because goblins versus gnomes provided different sets of cards to um, phase out the injured blade master and the circle inconsistency and it started using death lords and valens chosen and gilbin stalkers another way of thinking about it is if you never have anything die which costs two or less mana then you're getting pure value when you play your resurrection all in all, really hard card to evaluate because you usually want to put in some amount of lower cost cards like Zombie Chow, or New Priest card which we're going to see soon, or Northshire Cleric. But maybe you happen to put it into a deck which like, purposely plans on not using those until it's late, or maybe you get lucky, you resurrect your Sylvanas, that's disgusting. 2 mana Sylvanas, wow. So this card is either terrible or mediocre or super good. Yep, I covered all my bases on that one. In Arena, and maybe it's better to think about it from an Arena perspective, in Arena you very rarely have 1 mana cards, so you got your 2 mana cards. It's basically better than Unstable Portal, right? Because 1, you already know what you have which has already died, 2, you're not running any cards which are less than two, so Resurrect seems just super good, except sometimes, except it's a card which costs two, which you can't play on two, which is a serious drawback, but in the late game, you're getting value out of it. Okay, that's actually not obvious either then. <laughs> in Arena, maybe it's going to be average. And then in Constructed, you'll see more construction to do things. But let me paint you this picture. Turn 3 Injured Blade Master, turn 4 Resurrect, Resurrect, after your opponent kills your Injured Blade Master. That's the ultimate sadness. Th that will be a thing. Welcome to the worst card in Black Rock Mountain. I'm sorry, Warriors. So you've got your uh, Whirlwind, which costs 1 more mana, and if, you're, if you've got 12 or less, you, you deal 3 damage. That's kind of nice. The uh, flavor text on the card, at least, is really good. It said something along the lines of, Hey, finally warriors have something that actually becomes better than mages. It's true. Like, it's it's strictly better than an arcane explosion. That is true. Wait, no, it's not, because arcane explosion only deals damage to the opponent's stuff. So, here was my thinking. In theory, you could replace your whirlwind with revenge, and then when you actually get to the late, late game where you're, like, struggling to hold on, you play the revenge, and like the opponent has, is mech mage, and it's got like four guys out with three health, and then you play your revenge, and it's awesome, and then you win the game. But in all other cases, it's like one more mana than whirlwind, and whirlwind is only really good because it costs one mana. That extra mana is really tough to pay for it. And, and those situations where you are like fighting that mech mage and. Like, you're fighting such a hard battle, and you get to 12, and then you revenge to come back. That's going to be great, but it only works out in Disney movies. Um, in Arena, this card will suck, because Whirlwind tends to already be bad, and revenge is costing one more. Actually, in Arena, this card might be better than Whirlwind, come to think of it. Because you're more likely to be able to be able to pay the extra mana to have the chance to do extra stuff. It's probably going to be comparable to Whirlwind. Not that you can ever pick the two cards together, since Whirlwind is basic and this is rare. And anyways, a card that you really shouldn't be paying attention to, I think. I mean, all the expansions had to have a bad card. 
And this card isn't even that, like, necessarily bad, because it does have an application, but it's just too difficult. It's like, honestly, you could have cost this at 1, and it wouldn't even be strictly better than Whirlwind, because sometimes you don't want to deal 3 damage to all your minions, especially when you're playing Control Warrior. You want to, like, deal 1 damage to your Acolyte of Pain, not 3 to it. And then it would be really interesting, and it might be, like, a powerful card. I'll say this last thing about it. It is really good against Mustard plus Quartermaster, if you happen to be at 12 or less, against a Paladin, which is, like, never going to happen. So the good news is, as a Paladin, you don't have to play around Revenge. Solemn Vigil. This one's interesting. First of all, I will say that I love card draw. So cool, Paladin has more card draw. Uh, I mean, they didn't really have any card draw other than really situational card draw, and here is slightly more situational... No, slightly... It's slightly more situational card draw, which is less situational. We established that the fair price to draw two cards on is three, because of Arcane Intellect. So if you can trade a guy against another guy, you play your Solemn Vigil, it costs three, it's all good. Now, Paladins happen to be one of the classes which is really good at making minions die because they have guys and they have muster for battle. You send your three muster for battle guys to kill their one guy if it happens to get to your turn and you still have it. And then you uh, play your Solemn Vigil for one mana to draw two cards. That's pretty awesome. Um, you play your Equality Consecration, you kill three of their guys, which is about average. You play your 2-mana, draw 2 cards, that costs 8 mana in the late game. Eh, maybe. It does take some work to play this, and it's not an absolute disaster to pay 5 to draw 2 cards. Like, if it's late game enough, and you've run out of other options, that's something that you'll do. So, you shouldn't really just be looking for those situations where it has to be better or exactly arcane intellect. It can be played for 5. I think that uh, this card is going to see um, a one-off in mid-range slash control. Unless it's absolutely insane as people figure it out to be, and then you'll see two. But here's the thing, like, Cult Master wasn't seen that much, and Cult Master was something where you could play your muster and then you pay four mana to draw three cards in theory, and you have a four mana four two, at least. In some circumstance, this is like a win more card, because if your muster for battle guy survived, then the opponent's probably in a bad spot anyways because you could have just played quartermaster and then won the game. So I, um, I'm putting the likelihood of this being experimented with and then people either coming to the conclusion that you run one of it in your deck or that it's not good enough. I I'm thinking more of that likely scenario rather than the scenario where this card is just super good and you always run two. And while we're talking about this card, uh, revisiting the Dragon, which is a 6-4 for 6, which costs one less for each minion that died this turn. It seems to be natural synergy with Paladin as well. But again, that card is also one which I would be reluctant to run more than one of, just because sometimes you get stuck with really inefficient cards. So that's the puzzle, making these cards work for you. And I will say this, I do like these cards where you have to put in a little bit of work for the card to be good as opposed to the card just always being good. That makes for more interesting planning playstyle. So, I like the general direction of this design. Well, here's the thing also, like, yes, you can pay three mana to draw two cards often, but you often don't want to pay three mana to draw two cards in the early game. You want to do that in late game, and by that time, you might have to pay five for it. But overall, I think it's going to be fairly good in Arena. All right, well, cute card. Priest only. I almost wish this had been neutral, just so many of the classes would have a, another way to deal with aggro more often, and that dragons would become more widespread, but okay, we give priests a bit more love. Uh, you obviously put this card in a dragon deck. It's a dragon, it activates those cards which make you want to have a dragon in your hand. Uh, you probably play this on turn one and hopefully you're holding a dragon. I am going to say this, by the way, though. It might be difficult to actually play this on turn one and be holding a dragon, because say you're going first, you have three cards. Do you hold your Ysera? 
No, of course not. So you mulligan that, you say. You get your Twilight Whelp. That's very sad. You you have your Twilight Whelp. You don't have any dragons in your hand. Like even if you mulligan the other two cards, there's no chance you. There's no guarantee you get a dragon. The death of Zombie Chow has been greatly exaggerated, I say. And maybe you play Zombie Chow anyways, and you build a super anti-aggro deck. And you know this might be a little bit crazy, but maybe you don't even run two of this in a in a priest. Dragon deck. Actually, that is insane. You you run two of this in a Priest Dragon deck, and you probably don't run Zombie Chow. If Priest Dragon is a thing. Will Priest Dragon be a thing? Is probably the other thing to think about, because this is the dragon card when it comes to Priest. Now that we actually see all the dragons out there, you would start to realize that in order to build a Priest Dragon deck, you would need to have exactly something like Azure Drake and Ysera, and... Then what? You put in the Chromagus. That's not that many dragons. So it's entirely possible that Priest Dragon never takes off, Twilight Whelp doesn't see a lot of play, and... meh. In Arena this card will suck because you're not often gonna have a dragon, you're gonna have... one mana, two, one. Boo. And no Fairy Dragon would probably not see play. It's bad. Twilight Drake is a thing, yes. But man, it is true that the Dragon King Sorcerer for Priest tends to be like one of the better ones, uh, just because you have the Power Shield, you have the Villains Chosen. Yes, Fairy Dragon is bad and constructed. When's the last time you've seen Fairy Dragon and constructed? Obviously, you're gonna see more of it with Black Rock Mountain, but I mean, you especially don't want to put Fairy Dragon into your Priest decks because you can't put Power Shield and Villains Chosen on it, and you can't heal it. I will liken this to GVG. Uh, when you had your Improved repair bot? I think that's what it's called, just because I haven't seen one of those in forever. Uh, five mana, five five mech card for priests, which gave Balakrai plus three health to a mech. People were like, oh, of course you put it in your priest mech deck. Easy game. Uh, similar to how you, in theory, put Twilight Whelp in your priest dragon deck, but can you make a priest mech deck? Can you make a priest dragon deck? And the same situation. Um, I'm on the fence on whether or not this deck exists, whether or not there's actually something, and yes, improved repair bot, heal bot does plus four, and that's even better than what I said, uh, but it just turned out that a priest mech deck wasn't viable, just like a priest dragon deck may not be viable. Because, I mean, here's an example. Why would you run a priest dragon deck instead of a paladin dragon deck when you have, like, that 5-5 five, five dragon, which comes with an innervate? Volcanic Lumberer! Nine mana! Oh, right, cost one less for each minion that died this turn. Uh, so you have your... <laughs> Druids are actually one of the classes which least is able to have one less for each minion that died this turn. They don't really move very fast in terms of clearing the board, that's one of their traditional weaknesses. Uh, you do Force of Nature Savage Roar, you do the Dream, and you clear three of your opponent's guys, and... Then this will cost 6 less and it'll cost 3, so you can in theory do Force of Nature, Savage, or Innervate, Volcanic Lumber, but that's ridiculously convoluted. Uh, you have cheaper ways to get big cards out. If you're looking to do something like this, you usually play Handlock. Maybe you work the Poison Seed, Starfall Dream in theory, but even then you would need 9 minions out, and then you play the Volcanic Lumber for free, and then they... and then... And then your opponent has their fun, has the beast in their sights, and then whoop -ow. Uh, this card won't see any play. In Arena, this card will see play because Iron Bark Protector is quite good, and this card will usually be like a 7 mana, basically Iron Bark Protector. Sometimes it'll be less, and when you get that out for less, you usually win the game. Oh, and that's Black Rock Mountain, the Hearthstone Adventure. Some really exciting cards. I was a little bit afraid that things weren't going to be shaken up enough because the cards all looked like fair, average-ish, but once you see the whole picture, what you have is a set of cards which you're going to need to put a bit of work into to make them shine, but I do think that they do have the potential to shine. I am, of course, as a control player, looking forward to a more control-heavy environment where you can play these dragons, and then you play your 3 mana 3 5. You're gonna see that a lot now. Into your 4 mana 5 6, into your late game. Your technician into hungry dragon opening as usual. But beware! Because when everyone slows down, he who is super fast will rule the day.
Poison seeds will reduce the cost of the number of minions on the board. Yeah, yeah, whatever. If you want to run the Poison Seeds Starfall Volcanic Lumber deck, be my guest. You're gonna have a bad time. Talk about previous friends' mount speculation. It was wrong. That was like, I, I even didn't even think it was actually the case. Any thoughts on Steam Weedle Sniper Synergy with Rag Hero? I didn't, wait. Your hero ability can target. I don't think that actually does anything. Do you see new decks rising into the meta? Well, I mean, this is 30 new cards bringing the pool of cards up to something like 600 something. So uh, for it to change the meta would be an overreach probably. But it's certainly going to make, like, you're going to start seeing different plays, different openings. Much like mech, you're going to start seeing, like, dragon variations of decks instead of mech variations. Uh, one thing that I didn't say, I guess, because I didn't realize how it work is, do you keep the armor when you get replaced by Ragnaros? I don't think that's really a huge factor because... Much the same reason you can't actually count on having the armor in place. Though I think with Nax and Black Relic Mountain Hearthstone is getting way more pay to win since it's almost a must to have the two expansions. I don't think it's a must to have the expansions. You can buy... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you can selectively buy wings. Even if you can't, then... Eh. It's a thing. What I do know is that even on my completely free-to-play Europe account, which I barely play on it is free to play and has all the cards up to now and only because i focused so much on playing on the u.s and i was too lazy to switch over the eu for the arenas that i um could not actually get the gold this time around i mean it's good design that you can actually you should be thankful that they can you can actually buy these things entirely for gold that in itself is a revelation your Sarah Chromagus Synergy. Wow, is that a thing? Whenever you draw a card, put another copy into your hand. I didn't even think about this with uh, Ysera. Oh, so that's what you guys are saying about with double Ysera. Well, yeah, I guess the dream would be turn 8 Chromagus and it survives in turn 9 Ysera. That's ridiculous. But I mean, if your Chromagus is surviving, you probably win anyways. Black Rock Mountain, a Hearthstone adventure!